Hello, ActiveSage here on the Sage channel, and as you probably know, there was a new update that came out today. You can see it in your news feed if you're learning up the game. And see, we are now on 1.0.35, and it added something pretty incredible. Electricity and signals can now flow through rotors, which means <laughs> a whole lot of stuff, frankly. But anyway, before we get to that, they also did some settings with the new world stuff, or actually even your world settings if you were to go ahead and edit your world. Now in your new world, it pops up with a screen, and you can, of course, enter your name here. So we're going to go with uh, Rotor Update, because that's the most important thing with today's update. We're going to set it to Creative, and then where's all your other settings while they're simply hidden behind this nice, simple... Oop, let me set that to Private. Advanced tab. So we click on that, and now you can see everything here. And look, Enable Copy Paste is automatically turned on when you're in Creative. That is something I've actually been wanting for ages. And I accidentally just turned it back off like a silly idiot by switching to Survival, but... If you set it to creative when on the other screen and then go into this, ta-da, it's already on. That, that's a simple, small thing, but I'm actually quite fond of that. And I'm going to turn off autosave, and now you still have your two normal things, and then there's this here. What's this new thing? What are, what's, what are these? Well, trash auto-removal is basically when you have a ship floating out there. If it's a small ship, such as you blow up a small fighter, and it's powered down and it's drifting there, you can see the message on your screen now, it'll basically delete it after a certain amount of time. And it's usually designed if the object is actually floating at speed, and it's usually far away from the normal player area, that's when it gets deleted. And you also have your delete respawn ship. So if you, let's say, join a multiplayer server, buzz in there in your little respawn ship, get out, start working on something, say, okay, guys, I've got to go for a bit, log off and log back on. You're going to be in a new respawn ship. That respawn ship will have deleted itself. But if you want to keep that, go ahead, stick a merge block on it. Stick a merge block to something else, another larger ship, and merge them together. Boom, it'll stay, or just merge it with the station. And that way, when you disconnect and reconnect, it'll still be there. Anyway, let's go ahead and load this up now. Alrighty, so here I am in the game. You might notice that uh, this doesn't exactly look like the easy start world I had selected. I've gone ahead and tweaked it and brought in my own Sage Station, and I've actually tweaked the Sage Station to demonstrate these how awesome these rotors actually are. And, um... <laughs> I'm, I'm loving this. I just, okay, so what we have here are basically extendable arms with our rotors set up off the side here. So, you know, it's basically like a spring and they stretch out. And then, of course, at the end here, we have more rotors to allow these to move out. And really, I, I'll just demonstrate them. That way, this, you know, the idea being this Sage Station could, if it was to be converted to a ship, could drift to a location, go ahead and deploy its stuff, or be brought to a position, and then deploy these solar panels and be amazing. So here we go. I'm actually going to go into a spectator mode here so we can get an even better shot. Let's do F9. That way we can control stuff even though we're in spectator. I'm just going to click reverse on this because you can see I have all the lower limits and upper limits on all of these different groups of different rotors set. And you can see down here, the rotors, every color-coded rotor means it's on a different ship, basically, on a different thing that it's connected to. So if the original rotors still show up as white, so these are the ones that are actually connected to the Sage Station, and then you end up with these here, and I've, I've named them, they were just called Rotor, because they were the first rotor on what counted as a new ship. So, you, but then they color code as you get more things connected, so you end up with, you know, those are all the ones from the first set of arms, if I can find the last second. Anyway, that's there, there's four of each. It's pretty dang awesome. Uh, color coding doesn't really help you much, but it does let you know that, hey, at least these are part of a different ship. Anyway, let's go ahead, select these solar arms, and tell them to reverse. Look how awesome that is. This is in real time, too. These are at, like, uh, negative two speed or whatever, or at least two speed. Look how awesome that is. I even love the little sort of ripple as it stops once it reaches the far point. Shall we, shall we tell them to close up again? They work perfectly fine closing up, so let's F9 again. Open this up, solar arms, I'm just clicking the reverse button, and they start closing. F8 to move my camera, of course, in spectator mode. Look how cool that is. I'm loving this. The possibilities that we have now with this are incredible. And boop! <laughs> I love it! Oh my god, it's incredible! I'm, I'm loving this so much. Da, 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 da. Hell yeah! Oh god. <laughs> okay, what else do we have in today's update besides this incredible thing which is going to revolutionize the world? And of course, by the way, the solar energy from these panels would be going into the main station. Unfortunately, we don't have any battery packs left, but, um, I say left. Really, the word I was looking for was yet. 
But I'm sure the game will eventually get to a point where you can have battery packs and stuff and be able to relay energy between ships. Alright, let's move on to another thing that came into this update, shall we? This. It is, well, it's basically a ship, but you can see the actual main body of the ship has a cockpit, a long beam, and a bunch of reactors. That's the only thing here. And all the actual components are stuck off the side to these rotors, and you see they're all powered and turned on, including our gyroscope at the back. Now, a strange thing is, or I should say an unfortunate thing, if we were to hop in here, if I can actually get in there, there we go, and press W, nothing, none of the control keys work, not even that rotor. Because, of course, they count as separate ships, unfortunately, none of this really does anything. It's cool, though, and of course, if I was to go ahead and stick an engine actually on here, we should get something very interesting. So let's go ahead and stick a few engines right here. Now when I try to go down, you'll very quickly see that the other engines, of course they count as separate ships, so they're trying to stop our movement. And if I was actually to go ahead and select all these rotors and turn them off, and since they have no braking force, now I believe they should actually, yep, spin freely, so you can end up in a world of insane confusion if you like, but um... <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty weird, pretty strange. Let me go into a spectator and yeah, you can uh, have some weirdness going on. <laughs> uh, anyway, now let me actually move on to the other things in this update, which are actually pretty dang awesome, which are... That's an interesting way to stop a ship if you had just a permanently spinning one of those inside it. Hmm. Which are landing gears. Alright, so here we are at my landing gear testing area, and we got a few key ships here, one of the bog standard ships that's shot up a little bit, and if we start looking at these ships, you'll notice that we have our landing gears at the bottom of these, pretty bog standard, you might say. And if I hop into the cockpit, you might even look at their systems and see, here we go, all our landing gears group, pretty standard, except for now we have this auto lock button and this brake force here. If we turn on auto lock, you can see that they're set to that by the outside, basically looking at them, they've turned blue, very nice. And now if anything gets near them, or it gets near anything, as I shall demonstrate now, by positioning us near this station over here, not exactly the easiest ship to drive, I probably should have worked on that a bit better, eh? But if we fly over down to this, and we get near it, Almost instantaneously, when I get in here, you'll hear it too. There we go. Ignore the one that broke off, but you can hear the other ones they've locked on there. And now you can see that the braking force is holding us in place. Now, if I was to go ahead and lower that braking force to... Come on, it's not updating for some reason. Whoa. Okay, well, it's updated, it just isn't showing for the group one. I think probably because we have a broken thruster somewhere or something like that. But it is actually updating. So now our braking force is lower. You can see now that we can brake free. And the ones that, as soon as I get near, they're still connecting. But of course, the their brake force is so low, they instantly brake free. And the one at the back is turning yellow because I set that one manually to not use the auto lock. Oops, and I've bumped and broken those off again. And let's hop out of this ship since I've damaged it so notably. And fly back and grab another something. Now, that in itself seems pretty cool. It would be really useful, the auto-locking mainly, just if you're like, okay, I need to catch up with that ship and grab it, right? So you fly up to, you have auto-lock on, and oop, you just grab it the second you get there. Another use could be something like this, where I have these large landing gears set to auto-lock anything you grab in there. That way you could theoretically grab your busted up ship, line it up with a large deconstruction area, and just toss it in there. And actually, that was a bad toss, because I think I bumped it. What might have helped us actually with that toss, to know how exactly we should throw that, is if we were to go into options, actually no, it's done from inside a ship I think actually. So if we hop into a ship, go into our information tab, and then you have show center of mass right here at the right side. You can turn that on now, and now you can see the center of mass is a little tiny one here because it's actually a broken piece of the ship, so if we were to leak that it would of course be gone. But now we can post and say, okay, our center of mass was... Oh, it's right there, in the middle, like we'd expect. So now we can go ahead and carry on with what we were doing, which is simply toss it into here. So let's line it up about where we want it, and that should go pretty much right in. So now we can toss it in there, and there, you see how it just stopped. That's because, of course, those landing gears right here have turned green because they've grabbed it, so now these can start deconstructing it. And let's actually go ahead and turn those on. There we go, those are now turned on. And so they'll keep deconstructing this ship as it gets pushed in. So every time 
all the bits near the drill get broken, you could of course go ahead and push this some more. And if you had these set to a low enough point, you could obviously just keep pushing on the ship from the outside and it would break free from holding that, but every time you stop pushing and it slowed up, it would relock again. It's very, very useful for stuff like that. And this also could be useful for, let's say, dropping off one of these ships. So let's say we want to go ahead and, first off, let's go ahead and disable that show center of mass. I think that should probably be in something like options game, but it's not currently there. So I think they should probably move that there because it's a bit strange to have to jump in a ship to see something that you can still see while outside the ship. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab another thing. So let's go over here. Let's turn our land gears on to auto connect, please. And the second we get near this, they should grab it. There we go, we got it with one. And 40 is enough to be able to grab and move this thing. And let's go ahead and bring it over to, let's say, this landing area over here. This is tiny little landing pad on the side. So it can be used to basically toss stuff into place. So there's a landing gear here, and you see it's that landing gear wasn't strong enough, so it just kept grabbing it. But if I was to very carefully position it there, come on, grab it again, and then bring it back over there. A bit hard to maneuver because, of course, if we were to turn on the center of mass, they're having two centers of mass here, and I don't believe they actually show the center point between the two of us. Hmm. No, it would be a bit interesting, though, if they showed sort of a center of mass for these two ships, because, of course, that's sort of would be in the middle point right now. But anyway, let's get it near that landing gear, and as we get near, once again, you can hear it starting to turn on, and it's locked in place. Now we can turn off our landing gears and float free, and it'll stay there. And, of course, if we on this ship have a higher brake limit, we should be able to grab this and get free. There we go. So we can pull it free like that. It's interesting. Not the most useful thing as far as I can tell, but I'm sure people come up with far, far better uses than that or even the grinders. The, the second one of which was demonstrated very, very well in the official dev update video, which I actually, at this point, since I think I've covered most everything, would suggest you go watch. It shows you everything I showed you, but very succinct and they have some awesome moving components with uh, constructors and stuff. Very, very cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.